You're being lied to, Cap. My receiver is rated to be 150 watts per channel. That's plenty for me. 150 watts over two channels only. Wait, what? Hello, party people. My name is Elon Osborne, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. But more specifically, have you checked out this video of mine? It's an overview of all of the different types of receivers out there. And in it, I mentioned DSP or Digital Signal Processor. Digital signal processing is essential in all electronics nowadays, needing to process both digital and electrical signals. But as is par for the course on this channel, I'm gonna talk about what some might refer to as separates or digital processors and amplifiers. But before we embark on this journey, if you like the silly way in which I present this infotainment to you, please consider these five ways to help support the channel. Join my Patreon for exclusive content, rock some merch from my Teespring, tickle your eardrums with original music from my Bandcamp, hang some original artwork on your walls from my Etsy shop or read my children's book to your kids, which can be found on Amazon or Apple Books. And thanks, thanks for the support. Link in description. Onto the stuff. When dealing with a home theater, a cinema processor basically does what a receiver does, except for one thing. Amplify. It's a video switcher being able to switch between several different inputs like your gaming console, 4K Blu-ray player, or streaming device. It's a DAC. Digital to analog converter. Taking your ones and zeros from your digital content and converting them into an analog electrical signal. And it's an audio you got a text from your mom. And it's an audio decoder and processor. These days, that includes being able to decode object-based surround sound, like Dolby Atmos and DTSX. But then it takes those electrical signals and feeds them to an external amplifier via XLR outputs. And that's the main clue to look for if you're wondering if something is a dedicated DSP or a receiver. Why do XLR outputs matter? In a nutshell, an XLR cable is three-prong, positive, negative, and ground. That ground pin makes it balanced, producing a much cleaner signal that is not affected by electrical interference. Unlike an RCA cable, which is only positive and negative, meaning it's unbalanced and more prone to electrical interference. So with those XLR outputs, you connect them to amplifier inputs, which then send the amplified signal out to your speakers via these speaker terminals here. And that in turn gives you the two main advantages of having a cinema processor over a receiver, a cleaner, balanced audio signal, and more power. On that note, Denon's flagship 13.2 channel receiver that costs a whopping $54.99 claims to output 150 watts per channel into eight ohms. But word to the wise, don't be fooled by that claim because it might not always be true. There have been many videos and articles out there that debunk how that information is just not accurate. Where in actuality, the receiver can only output that many watts over two channels when you're listening to music. But in a home theater application produces much less watts per channel. So always take that claim with a grain of salt. A dedicated external amplifier has significantly more power since it has its own housing, not needing to cram those normally bulky transformers with any other electronic components. Who are you calling bulky? It's got room to flex, flex, flex its muscles. I am not being paid by, nor is this video sponsored by Emotiva, but as of right now, I've got my eye on their line of cinema processors and amps. Because when you get into this tier of high-end home theater components, things get real expensive, real fast. But Emotiva have somehow figured out a way to combine audiophile quality home theater components at a price that's not out of this world bonkers. But speaking of power, their XPA7 amplifier, for example, when all seven channels are driven, it outputs 200 watts per channel into eight ohms. But then it even tells you right below that, it outputs 300 watts when only two channels are driven. Not beating around the bush there, they just tell you right up front. 
but one might argue that it's only your main front soundstage that needs that much power. Your left, center, and right channels. So they even offer stereo modules in their amps that divide that power into two channels, which might be for your height channels or your surround back channels, for example. Take a look at the back of their nine channel amp, the XPA9. As you can see, there are five high powered modules flanked by two stereo modules. So say you wanted a 5.1 1.4 Dolby Atmos speaker arrangement. In this scenario, you can power your left, center, right, and both your surround channels with those five high-powered modules. Then power your four height channels with the stereo modules. Since those are usually reserved for atmospheric sounds, rain, planes flying overhead, music, which usually don't need a tremendous amount of power compared to your front soundstage. You'll notice I didn't mention anything about a subwoofer being powered. That also requires its own bass amp which do exist. Yeah, like I said, shit adds up real quick when dealing with separates. Now, one of the main reasons an audiophile might be drawn to a cinema processor as opposed to a receiver is its compatibility with insanely good room calibration software. Everyone's home theater space is different. The length and the width, the ceiling height, furniture placement, you name it. Speaking of Emotiva again, their 16-channel beast of a processor, the XMC2, comes with its own calibrated measurement microphone and Dirac interface kit. Am I saying that right? Am I saying that right? Dirac? Yes. Dirac Live is widely considered to be the best room calibration software available today. The software itself is installed and run on your computer, which painstakingly accounts for all your nooks and crannies, standing waves and reflections that might interfere with your listening experience. So that alone is an incredible bargain, since actual movie theaters undergo similar room calibration to make sure that everyone is getting a reference quality audio experience. Recap. One reason cinema amplifiers cost so dang much is because they are more of an investment, since they only have one job, to amplify your audio signal. They can last many, many years, decades perhaps. So it's nice to know that if you do spend a lot of money on an external amplifier, that you can keep it in your home theater equipment for many, many years. And then you'll just need to replace the cinema processor from time to time, since HDMI protocols and other technological advances are happening so quickly that they just become obsolete way too fast. And lastly, Sure, there are cinema processors that are made by high-end audio companies like Emotiva, Arkham, Macintosh, Marantz, to name a few. But even companies you already know are in the cinema processor game, like Yamaha. So that's something you might want to check out too. So there you have it, folks. Do I personally use separates? No. Do I wish someday to have separates in my home theater setup? You betcha. You're just going to pay a premium if you want high-end quality internal components, as well as insanely cool room calibration software. And that's what you get with the Cinema Processor. You're also going to have to pay a premium for clean, balanced, and powerful audio signals. And that's what you get with external amplifiers. Are separates on your dream home theater wish list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss another video like this. And of course, always be listening.